Jamie, thank you so much for being here with me today. I was I was hoping that you could explain to the public a little bit about Vulcanverse and the mechanics of the game and what the future plans are. Sure. Well, Vulcanverse is um, first and foremost it's a it's a virtual world. It's um it's it's uh, it's a decentralized virtual world where people actually own their land um, using blockchain technology. So um, as opposed to a game where you sort of enter with a, you know, email address, whatever, you actually own the land um, us using blockchain. So it can't be taken away from you. <clears throat> but we've put a spin on this in that we've added a load of lore and fantasy and, and, and gaming to sort of take it to the next level. I guess to sort of simplify things, we can sort of say it's a combination of Decentral Land on Ethereum, Second Life, um, and World of Warcraft. Uh, I'm not saying it's World of Warcraft, but it's got all those elements in it. So yes, it's sort of fantasy, standalone app, decentralized worlds based on Greco-Roman mythology with animals and beasts and spells and all that. That sounds awesome. And that's exactly what all the shamans signed up for. Um. Shaman, yes. <laughs> Big shout out to the Safe Haven crew and the Shaman, um, who I think have have got about, I don't know, 5% of the land, 10%, quite a lot of it. They're really moving in by the masses. Yeah, it's, it's right at about uh, 500 plots so far, a little bit above. Yeah, and I'm really proud of everybody, honestly. Everybody's been putting in a lot of work, getting some ideas together, thinking about what they want to do with their plots, possible quest lines to create. Um, alternate storylines, figuring out how to create certain shamanic warriors within the village and having their niche w within our tribe. So it's it's getting really cool, and I, I'm I'm really excited about the whole ordeal. Um, so I guess what we can do next is talk about the Vulcanites. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the Vulcanites pretty much are, are they're sort of fantastical creatures um, based on, again, like the lore, because, you know, the lore is being written by the, 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 this fighting fantasy author who shares the same name as me, James, Jamie Thompson. And he's um, he's writing these game books um, for it. And he's written all this sort of lore um, uh, based on Greco mythology with a twist of fantasy. So the, the process usually is that he comes to us and says, okay, you need a Medusa here. You need um, the, the Nemean lion from Hercules and all this stuff. So he writes the title and a, a cool quote about them destroying them with their fangs of steel. And he writes this sort of few paragraphs of law. So we send that to our, our, our art designers who turn them into this incredible 3D model. Um, which I'm, we've shared a lot on Twitter, and um, and they're based up by quadrants. So if if you own land in Notus, the deserts, you can only have a venom tail scorpion. If if you're in Arcadia, you can only own a centaur. And the higher the level they are, the stronger they are in their fighting and foraging and and defending abilities. So they're all very ranked, but very very um, law based. Yeah, very based in history, history or well, fantasy history anyway. And that's what I love about it. You're bringing characters into the game that are NFTs that could be tradable, transferable, and they stay on the blockchain. It's, yeah. it's totally awesome. And they could be interoperable oh. on the actual games where they have use cases, like the foraging, for example. Do you want to explain a little bit more about what people can do with their Vulcanites and the foraging? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for, I mean, going back to what you said about them being NFTs, and the very cool thing about these NFTs, NFTs, I mean, obviously you get the static card, which NFTs, they shouldn't change an image. I mean, you know, because they're permanent. But each NFT ID, each one of these Vulcanites has a linked 3D model within the game. So if you hold, you know, uh, Copus the Tiger 114, it will have a 114 3D model within the game. Now that 3D model then gets leveled up through its experience within the game and then leveled up through another game, Berserk. So it all comes down to the same ID, but they can get metadata changes as, as, you, um, as you affect them or, or level them up. Um, foraging is, is basically is treasure hunting, really. It's sort of searching around your plot or where you're going and you sort of, if its foraging skills are high enough, it will, it will find something. You know, we've got animations of the, of the wolf sniffing around and you know sort of uh, the, the venom tail is, is 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 sort of having a look around and, and if it finds something it will go into its digging animation and then it yeah. can find anything from you know uh, nft game cards assets building assets you know v4 pits and oh, yeah. um, a variety of things and and for you guys you know i mean i know you want to sort of incorporate 
questing questing items it can find something for someone's quest and all sorts of goodies yeah and uh that that's essentially one of the things that i was going to ask next um so as far as the attacking and defending goes is that particularly for berserk or is there going to be a future plan for your Vulcanites to actually have some interaction against other players in the real world to where... Oh, that, that, I mean, that's, that's already there. That's our primary okay. use case. Berserk was a side, a side project, which is sort of snowballed into kind of like a Hearthstone sort of, not competitor, but similar to that. But yeah, right, absolutely. Right. I mean, yeah. each Vulcanite has, has, I think, four or five attack animations, defend animations, receiving hits. And um, so, you know, your Copis Tiger will be fighting um, a Sota Deer live in front of you in the world, you know, with, with um, effects and animations. I mean, you could be sitting there talking to your friend about the day and you turn around and you've got like this Medusa fighting a Scorpion next to you in, in the plains <laughs> of Howling Darkness. You know, the whole yeah. thing's so surreal. But yeah, yeah, they're fighting in game for sure. And, and, and I just wanted to clear that up. That, that was my understanding, but there were some people in the community always asking, yeah, so like, are people going to be able to actually fight with their Vulcanites and whatnot? And I'm glad to hear that because with a lot of the quests that we have planned, um, for example, I want to have one landmark for our Shaman Village that has a floor with Vulcanites guarding safe keys. And within those safe keys, they have actual hidden NFTs and items or just our little spin on what we want to do. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. And they'd have to defeat the toughest Vulcanite of that day to get the safe key absolutely and and this is what what's so great about having everything numbered i mean every plot has its own index number so i mean because we have to do that to store the nfts so now because we have all this data like you know plot 1442 belongs to you and this vulcanite has its attack data it means the ability for users and yourself and the shaman to make quest is is simple because you've got all the data for you and there and, you know, you, you can connect, you know, if you want to make a, I don't know, a, a treasure hunt quest or something. Right. Save the users, they have to go to plot 1142. They have to defeat this Vulcanite ID, whatever. They go to there and, and they do that and they get it. So any third yeah. party can connect these quests into it. So your imagination is really limited only to, I suppose, I, I suppose the technology in terms of animation. But other than that, you know, you can add any quests you really want to put in there. And that's music to my ears. Um, it really is. I, I've got a lot of members in the community that are excited about a certain quest line called Smuggler's Cove. And that's essentially just going to be plots along the coastline with hidden treasure items, if you will. And once you get them, you bring them back to the NPC, the non-playable character. They exchange that item for an actual NFT, yada, 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 and you move on to the next cove. And yeah, yeah. And... and the way you'd implement that would be it would simply within your plot we'll have a whole quest section where you can uh, with your own land you can add you know if someone comes there you can greet them if someone comes there you give them something when someone comes there whatever interaction you do the key for us is to make a really clear uh, ui really interface so you know how to integrate quest and input and output into your into your plots and once you have that you know it's the world's your oyster yeah that's right and um th there's one more quest that I want to talk about for the Shaman Village and I'm going to kind of get off of it. Um, huge shout out to a couple of our members for putting this all, all together with me. Um, but it's essentially going to be eight different coliseums scattered throughout Vulcanverse. Some in each quadrant. There's going to be one main coliseum in the Shaman Village. And it all starts off by the player um, getting an NFT, like a scroll, if you will or a ticket, they enter the Coliseum to face the main champion. And then a video starts of them losing, almost dying. And then the Shaman Oracle comes up to them and says, you almost lost your life. You would have lost all your NFTs and your heirs would have not received anything. So then that's, all that would be in a video somewhat embedded. And then that would explain them um, about inherent tea how they yeah. could essentially set up an inheritance plan, a decentralized inheritance plan within the village at one of the merchant stores, which will allow an integration with the uh, standard and business edition of inheritance. And that, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, what you said, I mean, a lot of people listening will probably think, well, how's that possible? You know, um, but it is. First of all, let's look at the yeah. video. We, we're, we're allowing integration of videos. I mean, it won't be in better, but, you know, our philosophy is if another virtual world can do it, we want to do it better. So, okay, so you integrate the video onto your land, show this whole, you know, animation or story you want to say about inheriting your NFTs. Um, in, insert a quest where they have to go and get a certain level, um, certain number of NFTs, which is fine because you can check the wallet to see what they own. Then they go to this registrar you want for inheriting. Um, it's a very simple check through an API route to see do they own this scroll, this scroll, have they beaten the loss, check all that stuff. And then all we have to do is just integrate that wallet with inheriting. And the beautiful thing about Vulcanverse is that we have wallets within game. We're, we're not running this game through the browser. You literally load up your, your avatar, um, create wallet, put your NFTs there, and then it interacts with the blockchain from your game as long as you have an internet connection. So interacting with Inherity to inherit all your stuff is literally, you know, connect your wallet to the community edition, either through the in-game browser or we can talk with, with Safe Haven about integrating an app with it or something. So it's all possible, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's music to my ears, Jamie. I, I love it. I, I just really want everybody to find out more about Vulcanverse because it's so amazing. The amount of smart contracts you can embed, things that you can do within it. Um, it, it's just limitless. And I mean, the beautiful thing about it is it's not like physical land. You don't have to worry about natural disasters. Well, unless Vulcan wakes up on the wrong <laughs> side of bed, but yeah, you're not going to lose your <laughs> land. It's, it's your NFTs. It's there. And, and, and it's, it is, it is exciting, but it's also overwhelming in, in the fact that like we don't have a, a frigging clue, you know, what people are going to build and what they're going to do. So we can provide all the tools that we can and keep upgrading it. But every time you're in the verse and you look around, something's different, a new character, a new creature, a new fight, a new asset, your neighbors changed. They've built this and the other. We've added something new to it. I mean, it's, it, uh, I think it's going to be highly addictive for a lot of people, to be honest. But yeah, it, it's an uncolonized world with fantasy um, and, um, and law and fight. So I guess it's going to take its own shape, really, on its own. It's going to be beautiful. Everybody's going to have their own little spin. I can't wait for the day whenever we have multiple different tribes and everybody comes up with quests where one tribe has to defeat the other. Like That's actually one thing that I'm working on right now. I've actually delegated some of my land to create an enemy tribe of the village that we're going to have to face in like maybe book three or whatever. I'm, Cause I, I'm, I'm essentially wanting to create books for the shaman village. And because I, I figured love it, your passion, love it. <laughs> thank you, man. I, I just figured there's got to be a reason for the shaman to want to enter Vulcanverse. So why not create a story about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. And, and as we said, I mean, I, I think the key for us is giving out access to data uh, in a very user friendly way because it's all there on the blockchain. I mean, you know who owns yeah. what NFTs and what plot they're in. So, I mean, making a quest would literally just be sort of incorporating all that data and then just allow people to run wild with it um but yeah yeah uh, absolutely um, you said something that i was gonna get to oh well slip my mind <laughs> and i'm sorry um how about the landmarks you want to go over some of the landmarks and maybe the effects yeah. of the land the landmarks oh i know what it was it, it was about it was about your your coliseum idea about you know how already we have that in place i mean because as you know that there are there are some land land buffs you know there are some areas of the land that have um attack high defense low and all this kind of stuff so you could you yes. could base that yeah so you could base like a war zone or a, or a gladiator pit on those buffs and if you own that you make it how you want so you, you forge it into a, a gladiator pit so people you know that they can organize to go there and fight and you can people can surround it and watch it and i'm sure they won't be the first first to do that um and yeah that comes to landmarks yeah they're also obviously we own them and we've got this company spark labs who've in uk who are like the leading cgi company and they've made these just oh, awesome looking things which are just not only in detail but in size um the, you know the vulcan city and uh, the minotaur's cave we got yesterday and um the palace of the dead which is 300 meters high you know bigger than the eiffel tower just towering over you 
Um, and I think that's the, the good thing about owning these landmarks ourselves is, is that we can add our own quests and uh, features and things to those things whenever we want because what we do want to do is we want to move into the MMO world slowly yeah. but surely not so much that it's just a game I mean right now we separate the the fighting from the Vulcanites and the avatars and you only fight if you set your your creatures to fight so you know you could just build your garden without being you know eaten by a trap draw and affected but we that'd be nice <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but but we do want to move into into that. So having landmarks and places that we own gives us freedom to add these quests. Just like you guys to add your quests, we want to sort of add a Vulcan based things as well. Now I do have one question for the community. I've been asked by a couple people, and just wanting to throw it out there: Is there any way that you're going to allow landowners? to create Vulcanites of their own for approval by Vulcanverse? Uh, for now, I'd say no, because it's just, um, I mean, now for, no for now, I mean, because yeah, we need yeah. to sort of retain ownership of, of, of the world and it, to an extent, you know, and we want right. to make it free. Um, but, you know, if, if there's, um, I mean, we're allowing people to build assets and if they get approved and they can do it. But because the trouble is, it's not just making a creature. We've got to rig it, animate it, bake it. You know, there's a lot of work we yeah. have to do. So, mm -hmm. I mean, and I it has to fit the law. But, right. Um, like, I, mean, I, I understand it's got to fit y'all's style. It, it can't be completely different. And it's got to blend with uh, Vulcan in itself. And that's why it would require a lot of approval and whatnot. It would, yeah. but that said, that doesn't mean we're not open to third parties talking to us and saying, okay, we want a limited edition of, you know, I don't know, a, a shaman, for example, you know, um, but we'd have cool. to work very close to the company and play it right because, you know, if we let um, this company do it and this company want to do it and we don't want to make it too much of a sort of a commercialized area. So, but I mean, we'll see, we'll see. Right now we just, you know, we want to build walk yeah, <laughs> so yeah, far, no, no. Speculation. yeah no i wasn't trying to get into speculation i was just asking you're excited <laughs> my man that's why yeah, you're excited I'm just, you I'm own so half excited. the land <laughs> so what's your favorite vulcanite jamie i've been wanting to ask you that uh has to be copus i mean i think copus, copus. was the first beast that came out and he got the record sale um I, I don't know if he's the best looking vulcanite but there's something about that tiger there's the way it walks i mean i get to see animations which you guys haven't seen yet right uh, something so majestic about that beast and um i think uh, yeah it was one of the it was the first higher powered one that came out obviously it's going to be sixes and sevens and dragons and all these things that that all maybe destroy copus but yeah no and I, and he he was nominated for the nft awards as well which kind of gave me oh, a yeah. little bit like i was like wow okay you know that was really there. cool congratulations how about you what's your favorite vulcanite my favorite vulcanite i'm stuck between trap jaw and uh blubber <laughs> blubber jaw yeah I'll, yeah it's blubber jaw yeah that's right yeah <laughs> awesome yeah he's just this big um fat defending thing yeah his defense skills are, are through the roof I, I just envision him being so funny on the uh animations like dodging and defending and and plus we, we have a forgive me if i'm pronouncing this wrong um but ciceron who created the uh karen <laughs> the karen uh, yeah. oh you've got memes isn't he about him yeah yeah shout out for ciceron for those yeah actually today is the is the closing date for all these memes and gift competitions um and some of them are just you know I just he's a good, and you can see this creativity literally with just gifts and, and memes and pictures. You put these guys in a world where they can, you know, terramorph and add buildings and, and foliage and temples. It's just I, I, I'm so excited to see what they say, and, and it's just I generally am excited to see what's going to happen. You know, it's not like oh, I hope they build it, the game becomes popular. It's it's you know it's it's my 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 wife. She's into she's um she's Greek and she does a lot of um, Japanese tattoos and she's very into the sort of the, the Zen philosophy. And she says it's it's similar to the uh, images of floating world, which is some I don't know what it is, but it refers to this ever changing sort of beautiful piece of art around you. Yeah, and it is. <laughs> yeah, 
and, and that's that's one of the major things I want to build in Arcadia. A bunch of floating lands. That'd be awesome. Just like uh, the Avatar scenery. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna be beautiful. You could even um, do it in the underworld with souls floating below it. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the other thing. I mean, there are going to be floating souls and Hades. All the rivers are going to have some some stuff in it. And it, and it's hard to kind of know what to share with the community yet because we don't want to sort of spoil the surprises but at the same time yeah. sort of let them know how big a project this is. So we're getting that, that, that balance right. It's been, a, it's been difficult. And I'm terrible. I, I'm the leaker. I'm just like, I get something. I want to just send it straight away to the community. And the devs are like, what are you doing? That's like, you know, a totally unbaked crap animation. And I, because of, for me, I get blown away really easy. I see a cube and I'm like, wow, you know, how'd they do that? So, but these yeah. guys, are, they're level headed. They're like, nah, not good enough. Send it back, get it changed. So we're in good hands. In good That's hands. awesome. That's awesome. Um, maybe, uh, maybe we could show some pictures of the Balkanites landmarks and whatnot. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to uh, do some share screening real quick. Okay. Should be able to see the uh, Vulcanites now. Right here. Oh, there's Copus, yeah. Oh, no, there's all of them. So here we are. We got the Numatox, and then we got Copus. The Neomine, and then the fairy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's. I mean, there are nineteen of these, so obviously. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. More. But um, it's funny because Jimmy, our uh, he he our art art guy who makes these, he's just he's full on Hades, and he loves making zombies and blood and beasts. And I say to him, "Listen, man, just make me a level one, um, a level one fairy." And she comes out like that. And it's so hard to make her level one. Like there's been so many level ones I've asked for and we've had to upgrade them to two or three because they just look too damn good. So yeah. I think Tomios, the goblin on the top right, is probably the only one that really looks level one-ish. You know, we had to really play him down. But You see, I, I thought he was a level four when I saw him. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, size doesn't matter. That's the, that, that's going to be a heck of a Oh, uh, right, sure. yeah. We'll, we'll never I, win. I mean... In no, no, day, I'm not just... complaining, Jamie. Jamie, I'm not complaining. I I'm just saying, yeah. I thought he was going to be a, a higher level when I saw him. Just because... Yeah. Like... It's because they're so good. Like, the pictures are so damn good. We can't stick a level one or anything. I feel like it's giving someone a, a C grade for like A++ work. But Yeah, no, no. no. It's, it's nothing like that. You got to find balances in the game. That's, that's it. And I think you're doing a wonderful job with leveling. I, I really do. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to see some more uh, some more Vulcanites within the orders come out. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that uh, our game devs have really they're going to be using the orders um, a lot more in the future because when we put the orders in, we didn't really think about it much, but it gives them another variable to play with. You know, if you have so many of certain order, you can do a quest. If you, you know, your synergy, the the stats go up, the values go up. So it's a great variable to play with. That's that's exactly what I was about to get into, and and I love that idea, man. It's it, it's awesome. Like, it, it'd be really cool to to see something like that—a bunch of different types of carnivores that you have to use, or maybe even a bunch of different types of fairies or off of the other uh, dales. Just a bunch of yeah. different stuff. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. We could show the picture of the landmark. Yeah, so earlier you were talking about the 13% attack and defense. A spot that I remember is down here on the, uh, the shores of Pathomus, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, that, that's one of those spots. Um, but <clears throat> every one of these areas has a unique buff, and I really like what y'all did with it, such as um, which river is it that allows energy regen? Is it the uh, River of Styx or is it Hades? Yeah, it's the sticks, and also there's one up in in Arcadia, if I believe. Oh no, maybe it's yeah, yeah. There is a river up in Arcadia. All I know yeah, is it's, yeah. it's the river sticks, and I've forgotten the name above of the, the Arcadian southern one. Palace. Yeah, above the Southern Palace, the is the river of. That's Arcadia. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the cataracts. Yeah, and I think that's really interesting. So, um, essentially, those plots that have the energy regen, 
they're going to allow the Vulcanite to regenerate their energy quicker, or is it going to be an effect to where while they're battling or foraging, they're also regenerating energy to where it's kind of like they can last even longer? Yeah, I mean, they can't regenerate while they're fighting, because otherwise okay. no, no fight should ever end. But what it does is you've got right. two types of regeneration. One is the active and one is inactive. Active means you've just been in a battle, you've got some war wounds, you know, and you just need to recharge while you're still in game. So you just go drink drink from the blood of the River Hades, you know, sort of restore your energy. Um, and the other one is when you've been killed. Well, not killed, but the Vulcanite's been sort of maimed and they have to leave the game. There's like this, uh, what's the word, a recharge period um, where they, where, before they can come back in the game. So let's say you've lost a Copis to a battle with a, a Thunder and he's out the game and you want to bring him back in again. You can you go, you, you go to one of these inactive recharging plays, which will bring his progress bar back up to bring him back in earlier. So a little bit of a difference yeah. between the active and inactive. That's cool. And um, I had one question uh, that I was hoping you can answer about the lava. Um, so I was reading throughout Discord and whatnot that lava can also be obtained through the Berserk game. And uh, will lava be the source of energy in Vulcanverse too? Yeah, I mean, originally what it was, you could get experience points from just, you know, winning in Berserk and also, you know, experience points as you would in the game, you know, the Vulcanverse, battling, foraging, spying, all that kind of stuff. And then the idea was you would use that experience points and disperse it amongst their stats, like to for a higher foraging, higher espionage, higher attack. But then we realized, well, well, you're kind of gaining experience and then you're sort of throwing it away to these other stats. So what we've done now is, is we're separating um, these, these, these two stats. So you have your experience, which your Vulcanite can earn in Berserk and your avatar can earn in the game and they can, and they can have a ranking, a leaderboard system like you would in any other, other game. But lava you look, would be the thing you would disperse to the other stats. So, for example, you win a game in Berserk. You get your experience, go up the leaderboard, great. But you also get an amount of lava. Now, you can use that lava to distribute amongst the foraging, attack, defense, espionage of your Vulcanite in-game. Same, same with in-game. Let's say your Copus wins a battle against a, a trap draw. You get experience you up the leaderboard but also lava from that fight and you use the lava to distribute that to your different stats so yeah that is the um the power of the world got it thank you for clearing that up that's it's really neat and um do you have anything that you want to mention about balkan city in itself as far as the spots that nobody could purchase but all the players who don't own land enter um, that's going to be the hub of every single event we do there. There'll be a lot of interactivity coming there from, from quarter one next year. But I mean, I, I imagine people will use that as a meeting place. I mean, we're going to add some yeah. trade hubs some NFT things and, and it's just majestic. It's, it's the only place we've really sort of gone into the interior and really put some serious effort into it. We want that to be totally overwhelming, but right. for now, in the been better, it's going to be just, you know, the hub of where it's all at and as we sort of iron out all the crinkles we'll see what kind of features we can stick in there like market days like friday is a i don't know a berserk card flash sale or sunday is like a fight sign up to fight in the shaman coliseum at vulcan um, yeah. town hall whatever because they've all got the different town halls you see in the vulcan city you've got the hades town hall and arcade right. town yeah. hall so the options are endless for what we want to do once we've got this base sorted out and yeah, I, I kind of figured that that's essentially what it was going to be, just a hub with a lot of different activities and events for everybody to do and kind of sign up for that, like maybe even events that occur within each quadrant, but you got to go into Vulcan City to get the NFT required to go to that event. Like, exactly. yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's and cool, it's the same man. with any quest. I mean, these these town halls are on plot numbers, so I mean, it, it it's so easy to reference any place on the map. And once you've got that reference, we, you, third parties can just add any sort of twists and and quests onto them. And that that would be an easy one, you know. Go go to um, the Boreas town hall first, check. We can see they've done that. And then then go off for a for a hike in the mountains with your minotaur for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be that'd be cool. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna show uh, the Shaman Village map real quick, just to show people what areas we got so far. 
Actually, before I do that, I want to show at least one of the cards to where people can see exactly what we were talking about with the buffer. So let me show this card right here, because I was describing the path of this earlier. All right, here we go. So this is kind of what Jamie and I were discussing with the buffers and landmark effects earlier. So the Shores of Pathomus, it's a 13% attack and 13% defense. Hang on, let me check what you're saying. But yeah, that's it, yeah, the notice one. But yeah, J Jamie's team came up with these four different cards that show you exactly what these land effects will, will do and uh, where each area is essentially. So I wanted to show one of them. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, these are, I mean, we rushed these out, to be honest, so it, it, the text is a little bit little bit off, but the, the stats are exactly the same. I mean, I, I, I didn't come up with all the numbers because we leave that to all the game geniuses over there, so they, they've calculated it all. Yeah. So you, you, you'll notice that um, when, it's not on here so much, because someone asked me, I remember saying, you know, what's the point of having a uh, plus a 10% attack in a place because everyone's going to have the same plus attack. Well, that's not the case because if you notice, some of them have owners only. Yeah. Um, not, not in this example, but in the others, you'll find that, um, you know, the owners get plus 10 attack. But if you beat them in that area, you'll get, um, you'll get more experience, you know, plus five experience from them. So it's all been very calculated and balanced out. Um, some of them are just like, you know, like the Great River it sort of slows you down and, you know, takes you, if you're there just like in real life, it would take your Vulcanites to take longer to recharge and um, the South Mausoleum, you know, that's a, a place where you're going to find more treasure. But yeah, it's all been calculated to the T by these lot over here. Like this right here, right, Jamie? Yeah, let's have a look. This is what you were describing, how like essentially only the landowners would have the 5% attack yeah, like everybody yeah. else would have the other stuff yeah exactly so so if you own part of the farmlands great you've got a higher attack but if someone beats you on your own lands they get more experience so okay you might want to you know be careful if you want that land if you want a lot of fights you're going to get a lot of people coming over there <laughs> um to pick some fights with you because they get more experience so you know okay remember you'd never you don't always have to attack it's only if you're in battle mode that you know you can sit there and enjoy the 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 fruits of your of your farm but um if you're in battle mode then expect a lot of people coming there and also look i mean you've got more foraging speed so i can imagine the farmlands yeah. are going to be pretty busy i would have thought without a doubt the deep forest looks interesting too <laughs> yeah a defense zone very right to him yeah 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 so i mean don't try and fight someone on their own land there um but yeah. you've got a five percent rare item foraging probability so that's <laughs> That's another thing to think about. You know, a lot of people are going to be searching for the same thing. And, you know, it's going to be some hot spots, man. I mean, I, I don't even know. I mean, I, I mean, just putting this 5% rare item, who's going to read this document and know it's there and go there? And which forager is going to get it first? I mean, who's got their things leveled up? Uh, it's just it's opening up these gates with these stats. And it's just, you know, let, let the people flock to where they want. It's going to be very exciting, that's for sure. Very exciting. I, I can't wait. Um, do you want me to show one of the landmarks, Jamie? I could show one of them. I've got a couple of them. Yeah, up. so 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 I'm going to show a couple of mid dev ones. I mean, obviously we've got a lot more final product, but this gives you an idea of the scale. I mean, if you look at the uh, the color, how about the Palace of the Dead? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, it should be blown up. Yeah, great. See, now what you can't see from this is the absolute mind-boggling scale. I mean, that skull and the door at the bottom, I think, it, let me think, one, two, three, it's four humans up to the top of the door. <laughs> so when you're, I mean, you're literally a speck at the bottom of the door looking up at this enormous skull. And then, of course, the tower goes up 300 meters, which will be seen all over the land. So um it's a magnificent creation it's got the hades can't see it on this but it's got the hades flags hanging from it some skulls embedded into the windows 
Um, and, you know, this team were given like four plots to work with, you know, only four or whatever it was. And, and they've just made this. It's ab absolute beauty. Yeah. It's astounding. It really is. It and allows other people to see well. what they can do, too. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. And per people live there. I think, I think Palace of the Dead wants to do I think it recharges you. Yeah, so a lot of people go to the palace to sort of recharge their, their Vulcanite. So you get a lot of people lurking around there, recharging for their next fight. That's going to be awesome. And to show kind of a little bit of the scale, let's see. We've got... <laughs> Right here. I noticed this earlier, Jamie. I thought it was pretty cool. You can see the palace peeking over the volcano. That's how tall it is. <laughs> Look how tall that thing is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how tall the Palace of the Dead is. It yeah, is taller yeah, than yeah. the volcano. It is. It is. And, and we're actually making the volcano bigger than that now, but the palace will still oh. be still be higher I mean, we're trying to use every little little inch we've got and of course you know the, the volcano will have lava flowing down it it's not going to be some static photo like that but yeah it's huge. oh yeah no yeah it's, it's going to have a lot more effects and all that but i just thought this was really cool man that, that shows the full effect of that height yeah is it pulled up yet on your screen jamie yep i see it yep Okay, cool. So yeah, this is essentially what we have right now with the Shaman Village. We've got a lot of land scattered in different areas of the quadrants, but we have some central areas as well. Like over here, this is going to be one of the Colosseums. Oh, cool. Very nice. The Hades Colosseum. You should have one in each quadrant. Yes, yes. We're going to have, uh, we plan on having at least, at least two in each quadrant. It's going to probably span out to be more than eight in the future. Um, and essentially, the whole idea is when they get to the Coliseum, they got to defeat the champion Vulcanite. So after they defeat the Vulcanite, they get the NFT and then they move on to the next one. Kind of like a <laughs> nice one. I and see, Thanks. you could run that even before we embed anything in smart contracts. If you guys have an you know, outside world, just discuss with each other who's fighting who and just make your own league table, then you don't even need us to do anything for you. You don't even need any sort of extra technology. You sort of decide who's going to fight who at what schedule, and then you could organize your own tournament there. And, and that's, that's exactly what we're trying to, trying to get done. And, and I'm happy that you're saying we could do that with ease. That's awesome. It's, it's awesome. So... But what really made me think about it, honestly, was uh, the concept of Pokemon Battle Gems. It's just that's what the whole concept of Pokemon was built off of, and it did so well. So why not incorporate it with the Coliseum, too, to where you have multiple different people that you got to be each time you get a badge, and then it's a sense of honor. And then after you do all of them, you might get a really cool NFT. Yeah. I mean, if, if you run that, you know, out of app in terms of like, you know, you sort of set up a little website or a page or a telegram from it, then you can you can just run anything. You can say you can say, OK, you know, t uh, Tony's fighting, um, I don't know, Billy. Um, we're, gonna, we're all going to watch the match at three o'clock. Everyone tunes in and watches it. You see it happen and then you, you, you manually send them the NFTs they win. I mean, you, you can do anything like this if you sort of, you know, run it yourselves and, uh, and you know, create the NFTs, which you know we're going to do soon i think i think let's talk of a shaman a shaman plate on the vulcan forge marketplace soon which will be nice that'll be really awesome and and I'm, I'm getting really excited about that jamie i really am um but i just wanted to have a shout out to three people really quick jake Pryor, awesome job man you've been doing great with building this coliseum out with us jd and bait shot billy y'all been doing great on the smugglers cove and y'all also have some some part in the uh, Coliseum too. But uh, yeah, there's there's going to be a lot of exciting things coming up for the Shaman and the Shaman Village. And I'm just glad that Jamie's allowing us to be a part of it. So thank you very much, Jamie. Seriously. I mean, Pleasure, man. It's lovely chatting to you anytime. And um, I'll probably see you on Discord in about 10 seconds. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yep. Well, um, I think that's, that's uh, everything. I just wanted to say one last thing just for safe haven. Hey guys, if y'all if y'all haven't looked into Inherent T, please check it out. It's the only decentralized solution 
to protecting your private keys to wallets. I, I really want everybody to check that out. You, you, you don't want your kids to lose everything that you've been working so hard to, to, to leave them. And it's not just your coins and your tokens. It's NFTs too. Just please look into it. Read the docs. If you like it, if it's for you, try it out. But all right, everybody, that's it. Peace Thank out, man. Again. Take care. No problem.